Okay guys, so to start off with, again, I have this sketch ready. Now, I am going to be using the background color as the base skin color. And I'm using the same palette that I use every time because I usually just shade the similar type of skin tone. So I'll be sharing this palette with you guys in the description as well. So here what I am doing is, once you have the sketch lines ready, you want to pick up colorless brush. Now, I want to be really specific here. Uh, obviously, again, this I have done this skin shading video before as well. But um, I wanted to do a video where I show you my updated process, which is a lot similar than the previous one. But I still wanted to do a video on it because I made that video a while back. So that's not the point. The point is make sure you are picking up colorless brush. Now, as you guys can see here, what I'm doing is I am the goal here is to blend out the sketch lines because they look um, pretty harsh right now. And also to spread that color which is coming from those sketch lines and spread it in a way where you start creating this base layer of shadows as you guys can see here now I do have a video on my channel on um, the difference the main difference between colorless brush and blending brush and how they work and stuff like that but just to give you a quick summary why I'm using colorless brush is that it just doesn't blend it also um, kind of helps in spreading out the color so for instance if you if you have been a traditional artist in the past um, you know how q-tip works and how we use it to kind of not just blend these sketch lines but to kind of spread that color out if that makes any sense so what happens here is we go over the lines or whatever color you are going over with colorless brush so what happens is it just not only blends but also some of the color from that specific area or lines or whatever that is uh, get uh, sticks to the bristles of the brush which further helps in spreading that color out in a way where the color is not too pigmented but is um, enough to kind of create a shape or give some object a shadow if that makes any sense so as you guys can see I went over those sketch lines not only I blended those out to kind of soften them but also I also created shadows with the help of that in the similar fashion I shaded the lips as you guys can see it's really easy with this brush I wish procreate has this brush because I create most of my paintings over procreate even though I really love sketchbook but I kind of switch back and forth. So I really enjoy painting portraits over sketchbook because of this very reason, because of this brush. So this brush, just consider this brush as a Q-tip, okay? And that's gonna be quite helpful. So in a similar way, I'm also going to just blend out everything. Not just um, blend out, but also give that specific area of the painting some sort of shadows so yeah that's what I am doing here I think I am going to fast forward this bit because there is like nothing specific to show you guys or explain from the perspective of shading in shading a portrait or skin you want to make sure you have you first have your base layer of um, shadows now before you move ahead to your base layer of shadows also obviously you want to make sure you have base skin color already filled in to the face okay now to tell you guys first of all uh, this base color is not the actual base color that I ended up using later on in the video I wanted it to dark to be a little darker but to make sure that I am seeing everything nicely I started with a lighter base as you guys can see here so if you follow along the similar way that I'm doing it right here you will also get the similar results so basically this is not the skin color I want on the face I want it to be a little darker 
but I'm starting off with a lighter color so that's a little little difference in my process nothing too huge so as you guys can see I already did the eyes I also did the eyes the eyelashes as well because it also helped in kind of spreading the color around the liner part eyeliner part where did we put eyeliner so that the eyeliner doesn't look crazy when we add it just to let you guys know that I actually when I was recording it I didn't realize that I so I was I completely forgot to record certain spe specific parts of the video or the process and in my head I thought that I'm recording but I was not and I realized it later so I'm extremely sorry for that but I'm still gonna explain you guys my whole process so the next step after um, you know doing the blending thing is to go straight to the eyes as you guys can see I started shading the eyes there's nothing dramatic I barely put some color in the iris of the iris part of the eye and also a really light grayish kind of color on the white part of the eyes you don't want to put white if you want you can but it's just gonna look crazy and I also what I basically did is I drew this little dot of blue on the iris part of the eye and then I spread it out using colorless brush so that it looks as if I shaded that entire area that's what I did so you want to make sure whenever you are painting iris depending on the light source that you have in your painting the upper part of the eyes the whole eye the inner part of the eye the upper part of the inner part of the eye I will just you know kind of highlight that area should be darker and as we go down it should become lighter keeping that in mind you have to shade the iris and also the white part of the eyes it's really easy really really easy and for the eyeliner or the eyelashes I never use black because it's just too much I just use really dark maroon color or just pick up the color that you use to create the outlines for the face and then just darken that color up and that will do the job because black will just look crazy on the eyelashes if you want you can use it and if you're going to have for an even darker skin tone yes you can use black but I'd suggest using a deep maroon kind of color now as you guys can say already that I actually missed a lot of clips in between at the time I thought that I am recording but I was not so I'm just gonna explain you the process or the stuff that I did so basically what you have to do after you are done with the eyes now the reason why we do eyes first is because it's just gonna help us later on later on the process you know deciding how deep the shadows should be and how um, lighter the highlights should be if that makes any sense okay that's why I always do the eyes first it just helps in deciding the depth or not even de depth but the colors that I'm going to use overall if that makes any sense so basically what I did I just started coloring over the base layer of shadows that we made using the colorless brush so I first picked up a color which was which has this orange undertone and which is obviously darker than the base color I brushed that color over the similar exact same areas where I spread the color out using the colorless brush if that is making any sense so the base layer of our shadow is also going to guide us later on in the process into deciding where we are going to be putting our colors after that once I was happy with that I picked up this maroon color which is right underneath that brown skin kind of color I picked up that color and I lightly added that color around those shadows or over those shadows now you want to make sure that you have both of the colors included in your skin painting because if you are going to use a color with just one undertone uh, your painting is going to look ashy and that is the reason why we also include some sort of pink or reds especially when we are painting skin because obviously our skin sometimes shows the that the blood that is flowing underneath the skin if that makes any sense so you want to make sure you're doing that also I added blush not only on the cheeks but also on the forehead 
on the nose and around the chin area as well. And I did the brows even though I have a tutorial on eyebrows I will link it, uh, link it down in the description so that you guys can watch it so it's really easy to do. Once I was happy with everything what I did I created a new layer right underneath every layer that I have and I added this color I will mark it on the screen as the true base color that I wanted to use. Now as you guys can see how incredible the results are looking just by adding that darker skin color as the base color and I then went ahead and highlighted the face and I used white color for that and I also did reduce the opacity of the layer because you don't want to make it look too intense but yeah I'm extremely sorry that I lost all my clips but I don't know if this video gave you the gist of my whole process the main things I explained to you, the main things that I changed, I explained to you guys. I will link the original one down in the description. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Do check out the original skin tutorial though. And it's going to be filled with information. And you can just combine both of the tutorials to create your own process. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.